Members of Washington State's Lumi Nation traveled more than 1,200 miles to southeastern Montana's Otter Creek Valley to have a hand-carved totem pole blessed by Northern Cheyenne tribal leaders. We're from the Lummi Indian Nation, and just on the uh, northwest area of our reservation, just outside the reservation there, is a place called Cherry Point. It's got deep water access. Uh, there's a couple companies that have bought it, and they're proposing a uh, coal port. They want to export coal to China. About 100 people gathered on the banks of Otter Creek. They came to stand in solidarity with the Northern Cheyenne to oppose the Otter Creek coal mine. Coal from Otter Creek would eventually make its way to export terminals on Washington's coast. The terminal that they want to build out there on the west coast is right on top of an ancestral burial site. It was an old village, and it's a known grave site, and my people are from there. And I truly believe that if you allow these white corporations to stomp on one grave, they'll dance on all the rest. Like the Lumi people of Washington, Montana's Northern Cheyenne Indians and their neighbors, area ranchers, are also fighting coal development. Roger Sprague and his wife Bonnie ranch near Greenleaf Creek. Sprague said his family has been trading with the Northern Cheyenne since they first homesteaded the area in 1881. We're neighbors with these people. We're both talented to, to work with these people. We don't want this uh, mine in here. We don't want the railroad in here. It's uh, our way of life. We've fought hard to put it together. We'd like to keep it that way. There's not one time that I thought, oh, let's go put a coal port in Arlington Cemetery. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're at, or what race you are, red, black, white, or yellow. Uh, we're all in this world together, and uh, we have to live in the aftermath of uh, corporate development. We have to preserve our way of life, and that also includes protecting our land. Arch Coe and its developers can't convince me that this is a... Uh, uh, an economic boost to the area. We kill the earth as if we had the license to do it. We don't destroy the life on it as if we were superior. And yet, deep inside, we know we can't live without it. Whoa, look at these huge eyes. Um, the reason I'm, I'm speaking out is for my grandchildren and their children in the future. Um, I want them to enjoy this peaceful, beautiful land like I was able to enjoy where there's no pollution, air, water, people, pollution. If the corporations are free to damage the environment or to damage our health, then we have a serious problem. It's it's country that, that you can make a living in here as long as you figure out how to get along with it. You know, what people tend to forget is that, you know, down through time here that, that there were people here that, that fought hard to keep it. And they're, uh, they're our neighbors. Um, I think I'm starting to understand a little bit about what they went through back, you know, 100 and, you know, almost 200 years ago during the, the Indian Wars. Uh, and not trying to compare myself to them at all. I'm just starting to uh, gain a little more empathy for, for what happened to them and why they felt the way they feel about this country. And uh, it, it gets a little hard to talk about, but, uh, you know, if uh, with a little care, things can keep going on here for a long, long time. For GFTrib.com, I'm John Adams.